for us today. BIT. That's not enough. Yeah, that's wonderful. Sure. Uh, I would like to start this evening with a question to all of you. When was the last time you have done something for the first time? This was the question which I was asked by one of my manager on an interview and I still keep on asking myself till today and what I realize asking each and every time the same question is learning anything new is not so easy. So today I'm in front of you to propose an idea to propagate learning in a better way. But let's understand the aesthetics of learning. What is a good learning and what is a bad learning? And to understand that, we need to know how exactly are the learners. So, I would like to demonstrate the different kinds of learners in a classroom. The audio learner who listens and grabs the knowledge. And then we have the visual learner who sees and grabs the knowledge. And then we have the logical learner who analyzes and grabs the knowledge. We have the motivational learners who seeks the motivation and grabs the knowledge. We have the physical learner who does the physical activity and grabs the knowledge. So each learner is different from the other. However, we have a model of education which is sabotaged into a uniformed way for all these learners. So let me share my story. My trust with education started when I was being dumped in to a college where maths, physics, chemistry were the only subjects which I had to learn. They used to rub these subjects one after the other and education was only a concern to meet the cutoff score of the competitive exams. That was the first time I had my first breakup with maths. We were in love for seven years and all of that just went off as a whiff of smoke. Until today, I fidget with numbers. But there was another love I found just in the opposite class where the teacher was explaining a beautiful concept of insulators, conductors, and semiconductors. He was trying to explain me the difference of these material with the width of the valence band and the conduction band. When he was trying to explain, there was a different picture which was inside my head. I was seeing the entire concept in a hugely different manner. Let me show you. Are we ready with the audio? Yeah. Sure. I need the audio again.
but when the temperature is increased So this was the way I found the education to be inspiring. I found that it fits each and every type of learners, be it kinetic because there is a movement, be it motivational because there is a concept which we are trying to tell in the form of arts. However, if we see the current education system, it chokes the students, where the purpose of education is only limited to competitive exams, where everything is being designed by beautiful pictures and confusing graphics and moving from blackboards to storyboards and calling it as an e-learning. This is something which is happening with international schools, colleges, corporates and forums which educate on different subjects. Do we consider this as an end of art? Do we consider this as an end of holistic learning? We have to ask these questions. We have to ask whether are we teaching the correct subjects to our students? Are we trying to impart knowledge with our subjects? Are we making him a better human being? Or are we educating him to lead his life in a better way? Hence, I come to the proposal. Why can't we use dance as a tool to express our education system? Why can't we bring in dance into classrooms where concepts of science, thermodynamics, artificial intelligence be taught in a form of a dance piece? Why can't we bring in artists to collaborate and explain different kinds of concepts in our seminars. Yeah, this can be done, but how can we understand the dance? For that, we need to add dance into our curriculums. We need to make it as a better way to express ourselves. Dance can see its path through the education system and give us a better way to see the actual picture. Dance can also teach subjects which are not so convenient or not so easy to be talked about. Let's take the case of adult education, adolescence education or sex education. So there was an act which was passed in 2017 by Ministry of Human Resource to mandate sexual education in schools and colleges. However, soon after this act was passed, there was a controversy which arose. Many opponents quoted that telling or giving information about sexual education will turn the youth into a curse for the Indian culture and values. But the actual problem was not told. The actual problem was the teachers were not able to speak about this particular subject. They were not able to give the information in a verbal way. 
they were shy hesitations which, which were blocking their particular way. So, in these kind of situations, we can use dance to explain the complicit information about sexual education. We have different kinds of dance forms in India. If we teach these particular pieces to the youngsters, they would be able to go ahead and understand the consensual nature of these subjects. They would develop as a better human being. If we teach these subjects to our boys, they would be able to take care about their woman. If we teach these subjects to a girl, they would be able to stand up and speak. Let me go ahead and demonstrate to you another unique piece on the same subject. And this piece would showcase the different emotions a man and a woman goes when he has been sexually abused. A woman who is able to be free in the world exploring but suddenly she finds an unknown man
well. So that was the way how we can talk about these subjects and educate our future generations. So my ask to this audience is try to find out an art. May that be a painting class. May that be a dance class. Embrace it. Fuse it with your current subjects and create a unique world which is curious to arts, education, learning and everything. Thank you.